So let's jump into something kind of different. Uh, I want to basically guide you through all of the things that have happened this year on the folding uh, kind of landscape, because I know a lot of people and friends that basically stopped syncing with it uh, after three, four, five, six, seven papers came out uh, within like three or four months. So the goal of this talk will be basically this, and also try to go through like 40 something slides in a speed round like mode in less than 15 minutes, because I have a bet with some colleagues in PSC uh, that I definitely need to win. So going really fast, First of all, we go through folding. Second, we go to multi through multivariate. Third, we finish with conclusions. So, ready for the speed run. First of all, uh, we begin the year and we are in Vietnam with PSC and we discover Nova. Actually, Nalin tells us about it. And we are like, wow, you can just get actual statements and fold them as if it was a book, but the book is always one page, although it contains uh, the same amount of information as if it was N. So that's really crazy. And we had the idea of building uh, the ZK web assembly. So we were like thrilled. It was fast. It was kind of like recursion, aggregation kind of thing. But we, we quickly found some issues like you don't have high degrees, because if you have them, everything blows up. You need curve cycles, only R1CS, no lookups. So for the things that we are writing these days, it really didn't work. Then, while we were there, we see a potential kind of hacky way, to put it in some sense, to actually come up with some minimal spec for a GKBM-like uh, execution, where we kind of we're enthusiastic about parallelizing computation, uh, having this kind of IBC way of checking things while we were derivating the memory checks to uh, some uh, KCG um, uh, schemes that were able to aggregate all of the memory stuff, uh, also through Merkel and Merkel trees, and we basically concluded uh, all of this kind of work with this post that you can see here, which is called Towards Nova, uh, Towards Nova Basic ABM. Uh, I encourage you to read because it's, it's really cool. But that left us with some questions, so first, into one folding, better memory handling, and can we finally have something that doesn't blow up uh, for the, the cross-term checks? There's not only that, there's also cool explorations that we had there, so we started exploring, exploring a bit Sangria, Han and Honor did that, and on my side, I was trying to see if we can find some kind of pair of curves that has really, really, really good properties, such that we can outspeed Fry since we, re we already had like a really, really performant prover. Well, it turns out that while we were doing all that, Sangria was also out, and this was like, okay, let's just grab our stuff and we no longer use R1CS. We now put Plonk on it. But it had like noticeable issues. I think the work is really cool, and definitely cheers to Nicolas Montblanc for that. Uh, but it didn't get rid of the biggest issue with was cross terms. So we still have cross terms, and we need to get rid of them. Otherwise, this entire scheme, it's not gonna be performant enough. So, Zuzalu arrives, and we were nova pilled. It was like crazy. Everyone was looking into it. We were all like kind of excited. And then Lev finally found some kind of hacky way to actually put uh, two round protocols or multi-step protocols and kind of lookups, or what it will end up being lookups, inside of um, folding schemes. And this was one of the first times where I was like, we might get there, like at some point we might get there if we keep pushing like these kind of barriers that we have, we might actually get there. You have also a really nice post, which all, it's like a geroglyphic, but if you put some effort into it, <laughs> maybe you can end up getting it. It was really hard for us to follow it at the beginning. And after that, um, the last thing that we were saying is, okay, finally someone needs to come up with lookups. We almost have it there. We know that we have, we, have, we can kind of prove permutations, we can kind of have multi-round multi protocols, so definitely lookups is the next thing that will happen. And sure, not so long after that, um, Adbark and Jan came up with Origami, which is basically a scheme that allows you to have lookups inside of folding, which is what we were asking for. Still, we were having the same issue. We have these cross terms, which are blowing up the entire thing, so if you have Few lookups, the thing is nice, but when the lookup arguments start to get big, you have a lot of columns and you need to permute a lot of stuff, the thing gets messy. So aside from that, uh, our colleague George from the EF uh, cryptography team uh, 
was battling against the current Nova implementation, and he figured out the way to do three to one folding. And why this mattered is not because we didn't know how to do it, like from the equations, this is obvious, but I think the, the good thing about that is, what, is that we could actually benchmark something finally. We can start to get some real world results. We can see how parallelizable and how basically we can deal with that such that we can explore maybe other ways, we can keep following the same path, or we can just, I don't know, hang out there. So a little bit of meme time. This was basically our, ourselves at that time. Like, there was nothing else. It, it's, it was just folding, folding, folding. How do we get rid of clusters? How do we do end-to-one uh, end folding? These were the main questions to, to reply. And when we were at Zuzalo, we kind of get got a glimpse of a preview of what it will be Hypernova and, and, and CCS. And we were told, yeah, the, Srina figured out a way to, to get rid of the, of the cross terms. And he, he found a way also to like, kind of get a, a, a much better argument. And we were like, oh, but really, but, but please like, get the paper. We finally got the paper. And everyone was shouting, scroll up, scroll down, listen this, check that. It was chaos. It was madness. Uh, and this was kind of the representation, the best representation that I couldn't find, that I could find uh, about it. So finally, CCS and Hypernova. Uh, this comes up and we read it and we're like, okay, that, that's solved then, no? Like, we had much better arithmetization and something that was at least promising enough such that we could unify all of the things that we have, our one CS, the thousand different Plonkish arithmetizations written by everyone, all the things, and put everything into a single arithmetization that was common for everyone. So this was really cool. On the other side, Hypernova was like crushing it. No cross terms, end to one folding, like lots of possibilities and lots of ways to go from there. It was really fast. It kind of solved all of the issues, but some things were still missing. For instance, although we had SIMD, uh, Hypernova built on the top of Nova as a black box, we had Super Spartan Plus, we had like lots of crazy ideas in the paper, we were still missing like a really efficient and good lookup argument such that we had the confidence that we could build on the top of it most of the circuits that we use now. Because um, if you have seen how circuits are written now in, in Plonkish, you abuse lookups pretty much always. And you cannot afford using something that doesn't abuse lookups if you want to write like at least a state of the art circuits in, in a lot of different places. And so, not so much later, uh, we got Benedict Boons built into this. Uh, and together with Bingy Chen, they come up with Protostar. And all of a sudden, we have high degree gates, we have vector commitments, we have Sadly, two to one or three to one folding, because otherwise we can kind of blew the entire thing up. But it was definitely, definitely, definitely much better on the lookup side. Uh, and also the fact that you can now support high degree gates can kind of pay off for some other like counterparts or you could rewrite the circuits in a way in which this is good enough. So after that, and we have him here and we'll speak next. Uh, Ariel Gavithan and Liam Eigen uh, basically came up with Proto Galaxy. And Proto Galaxy to me was like Hypernova and Protostar just had a child, and the child was so lucky that got the best of bo both worlds. So, end to one folding, high degree gates, vector lookups, independent of f of x, so you can put CCS or whatever you want there. I don't think I need to say anything else. This was like really, really, really nice. Uh, Finally, we got Cyclefold, and I would say this is kind of my reaction when Cyclefold was out, and we're like, Cyclefold, we get rid of the cycles? Well, it turns out, no, <laughs> sadly, it would have been insane, but we get much, 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 much better, such that now if we need to write a decider for these things, the decider is significantly much more optimized, and we need to do a lot of wrong fill, lot less uh, wrong fill arithmetic inside of our circuits or, or outside of it in the ABM to actually verify the entire thing on chain, for example. Then we've had things like Kilonova, some other stuff. It has been madness. Uh, there's been a, a lot of work, like these ads, if I understand correctly, zero knowledge into the mix, which was something that we were also kind of missing. So, cheers. Um, and the question is, we kind of have gotten a bit stuck. I wouldn't say stuck, but kind of the, the, the hype and the, the craziness kind of got a bit of peace. And 
while all of the folding madness was happening, uh, Serena, Thaler, and Wabi were kind of cooking something. And Lasso and Joel papers were released. Uh, we saw them and it was like, what? Uh, it turns out that you have almost free lookups if you have structure. And if you don't have a structure, it, it's even not that bad. Um, maybe it's not exactly lookup singularity as it's kind of mentioned, uh, but because basically you, you cannot deal in a good way with uh, non-determinism, but it was much, 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 much better than what anyone would have anticipated, that's for sure. And one pretty big detail about it is that this is relaying on GKR, and we will see now that this was kind of a thing. So notice that GKR indeed is based on some check, and it's like, pretty old, old considering the <laughs> dates on which we're moving, which is in one year we've had like five or six papers in the same topic, so old, let's say. And this, in reality, is not the only protocol that we have done with GKR. So if we look, we go to the multivariate setting and we see uh, Havoc and Papini, which, who came up with, lock up with GKR, so an improvement over their previous protocol, which basically relays on GKR to speed up and reduce the amount of commitments that you need to perform. And all of a sudden, from, and let me show some maths, because this is like, it's really cool. You go from committing to every single column that you have involved in your lookup to actually just committing to the multiplicities of the individual values that are located in all of your columns, plus the lookup table, and that's it. It's really, it's really, really, really cool. It's awesome, but the problem is you get a GKR proof as an outcome, which is probably not something that you want to deal with on chain. They were not the first ones to play with GKR in the Ethereum world. Indeed, this is a post, I think, from the members of Consensus, where they were already like kind of speculating of using GKR for memesy, hashing, and this kind of stuff, which was also really cool. And finally, uh, we can also see nowadays that people is playing with this for ECDSA uh, verification. And indeed, they achieve an outst outstanding result in my opinion. 500 ECDSA signatures proving in three seconds. Lev, uh, who is also here with us, already kind of theorized with wrong field arithmetic and these kind of things. And it looks like not only ECDSA, but also wrong field arithmetic is getting, getting here. So just to wrap up, this has been a crazy speedrun to all of the things that we have gone uh, this year. You have the slides, like, I don't know, in the video or somewhere, so if you want to get references to any paper, feel free to go there. Um, my point is, we have gotten one of the best kind of eras in the sense of new papers, people iterating through things and protocols, a lot of people trying to implement everything. So I would at least ask that we, if we cannot keep even at the same pace, at least we try to, because the state of the art crazily exploded in, in terms of quality, and I would really enjoy riding this wave again. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, we, uh, we do not have enough time, so if you have questions, please find Carlos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we can have one question, quick question. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, simple question. If I want to develop on, uh, with folding schemes and uh, just uh, for some uh, machine learning model, maybe some simple one, uh, which tool, which uh, scheme do you think I should choose or start with? I mean, not so complex one, but uh, efficient enough. So uh, there's Jator, for example, which puts like two billion constraints to do machine learning inside of a circuit, and all of this is built with Nova. Uh, the repository in which Microsoft, Lurk Labs, and all of these people are contributing. Now I think it's Arecibo, but it's the same basically. Um, also in PSC, uh, Arnau Cube has been done a titanic world, uh, work to put all of the folding schemes in the same repository such that you can just plug and play. So it's based on trades. You can have multiple um, arithmetizations, CCS, Plunkish, whatever. You throw that. Uh, into whatever a uh, proving system or folding scheme you want. You have Hypernova, you have uh, Proto Galaxy, if I'm not mistaken, you have Nova, and there's more things to come. And finally, you have a decider that verifies that, uh, um, that builds your entire uh, decider uh, in Growth16 and planning also to, to add more things. So it's a fully customizable library if you, if you want to check. Great, thank you so much.